Mr. President, I come to the floor today to talk about the issue that got me into politics many years ago in the first place, early childhood education. Uh, and I want to thank my friend and colleague, Chairman Harkin, whose leadership on this critical issue is unparalleled, and I'm delighted he is on the floor today as well. I also want to thank Senators Casey and Arono for their strong support of early childhood education. They are great partners in this work as well. Um, and Mr. President, of the 535 members of Congress, I just have to say, each one of us comes to Washington, D.C. with our own unique backgrounds. We're a collection of military veterans and farmers and business owners and a lot more. Well, as for me, I come to Congress as a mother and a preschool teacher. When my kids were much younger, I found out that their wonderful preschool program was being closed down by my state because of budget cuts. So when they were very young, I put them in my car and traveled to Olympia, our state capital, 100 miles away, uh, to explain to these legislators, who I didn't know, why they just could not cut this important program. Well, when I got there, legislators told me there was nothing someone like me could do to save that preschool program. And one legislature in per legislator in particular told me I was just a mom in tennis shoes and I had no chance of changing anything. He said I couldn't make a difference. Well, that made me slightly mad. And I drove home and I picked up my phone and I started calling other moms and dads and they called moms and dads from around our state. And over time, about three months, we organized thousands of families in our state and we wrote letters and we held rallies and when all was said and done, the legislature listened to us and they reinstated that preschool program. I went on to teach in that program and as a preschool teacher, and then I served on my local school board. So Mr. President, when I eventually did come here to Washington, D.C. as a U.S. Senator, I knew firsthand that if we want to strengthen our economy and give our kids a brighter future, we could not wait until they were teenagers or adults to invest in them. I had seen that in my own classrooms, that when young children get the attention they need, they are miles ahead of their peers on a path to success. I saw my own students who knew how to raise their hand or ask a question or stand in line to go to recess were the ones that were then able to go on to tackle a full curriculum in school. So that's why this week I joined a bipartisan group of colleagues to introduce legislation that will give every American child access to high quality early education. The bill, the Strong Start for America's Children Act, aims to significantly increase access to and quality of early learning programs that start when a child is born and last until their first day of kindergarten. This legislation authorizes a federal program that supports our individual state's efforts to educate their youngest citizens. It makes sure that early learning programs everywhere have quality teachers and meet high standards but it also provides states and school districts and preschool programs the flexibility they need to meet their local children's needs. And although I approach this issue today as a grandmother and a mother and a former preschool teacher, many of my colleagues have their own reasons to support early education. Former law enforcement officers and lawyers and sheriffs whom I work with know that when we invest in our children at a young age, they are more likely to stay out of trouble and out of jail. Business leaders and economists know that when we spend a dollar on a child's education in the first few years of they, their life, we save as much as $17 throughout their life. Our military leaders tell me that 75% of our nation's 17 to 24 year olds are ineligible to serve their country, often because they can't pass the necessary math and reading tests. So it's not only teachers who are fighting for pre-K, it's generals and sheriffs and CEOs. And Mr. President, 50 years of research backs this up. We know that 80% of a person's brain development occurs before the age of five. But while China is aiming to provide 70% of their children with three years of preschool by 2020, and India is doing the same, we today do not have a national strategy to get the youngest Americans ready to learn. A Nobel Prize winning economist, James Heckman, uh, an advocate for early learning, says that skill begets skill. 
You know, this summer I traveled throughout my home state of Washington visiting early learning programs and I heard from a kindergarten teacher who told me that while some of her students in kindergarten are practicing writing their names on their work, others are learning how to hold a pencil. These children at an early age are already playing catch up. So when a child who's benefited from early education knows how to open up a book and turn a page, someone can teach them to read. But Mr. President, in classrooms across our country, some children are falling behind. And that gap between children who start school ready to succeed and those who don't has serious implications for our country's future. Though historically we've invested in education to build a path to middle class, we are now falling behind. We now rank 28th globally in the proportion of four-year-olds enrolled in pre-K and 25th globally in public funding for early learning. That cannot continue. So Mr. President, in the coming weeks and months, I'll be working with my chairman, Senator Harkin, who's here today, uh, with many others to work towards making some smart investments in our education system to move this legislation forward. Our country is in very large part the product of decisions that were made decades ago. The decision to make public education a priority now will have an extraordinary impact on the next generation. We are choosing every day between being a country that is struggling to catch up or being a country that has the knowledge and the power to continue to lead. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor.